So I'm going to get started. Um, my name is Melody Covington. I'm the owner of Abundant Health and Vitality Associates. I am a board certified internal medicine physician. I am also board certified in obesity medicine or bariatrics. So I wanted this first live stream to be about fentramine. And the reason for that is because when most people think about a weight loss doctor, they think about weight loss medications. So although that's not all that we do, I felt like it was appropriate to start with what most people think about and to talk about phenamine a little bit and answer um, any general questions that uh, came up. So phentermine is one of the oldest um, medical weight management uh, medications that we currently prescribe. It's been around since the 1950s. Um, for the most part, it is safe, it is effective. Um, pa patients can expect to lose double the weight that they would typically lose with diet and exercise alone. Um, part of why we use fentramine is because when um, individuals are dieting or doing an exercise program, they tend to have um, counteractions that will impede their weight loss progress. So for example, when people diet, they tend to have cravings, they tend to get hungrier. When people exercise, they tend to get hungrier. Um, as individuals lose weight, they also reduce their basal metabolic rate. So part of what fentramine does to help is it goes to an area of the brain called the hypothalamus, which controls a lot of different actions. It controls temperature, it controls um, heart rate, it also controls appetite. And fentramine reduces um, hunger, cravings, and appetite. And it does this by releasing um, a hormone by the, nor the name of norepinephrine. We call this a fight or flight um, hormone. So if you have to do something quickly, run from a bear, or protect yourself, this is a hormone that is um, released. So fentramine helps individuals who want to lose weight to counteract the opposing factors that happen in weight loss. It also helps them to reduce um, obsessions about food and cravings about food, and it also increases uh, metabolism. So that's part of why we use it. Um, as far as some of the side effects, there's a couple things that fentramine can do. One of the most common side effects is dry mouth. Um, so people get really thirsty, which can sometimes be good because they tend to drink more. Of course, they want you to drink water. Uh, it can also um, increase uh, insomnia, make it difficult to sleep at night. Um, it can increase blood pressure. That's why we have to very closely monitor this medication. This is a medication that we don't use in individuals who have really high or uncontrolled blood pressure or who have a history of cardiac events, heart attacks, things like that. Um, this medication can also increase heart rate. Um, there are some GI effects that are associated with fentramine, but they are a lot less common and not typically seen, at least not in my practice. Um, and uh, fentramine can also cause um, anxiety if you already have a history of anxiety. So it's not a benign medication. Uh, but again, it's why that it's, it's part of why we very closely monitor this medication. Um, for any patient who is on it. So um, fentramine comes in a couple different forms. It comes in a tablet form most commonly. You can also get fentramine in a capsule form um, and you can also get it as a disintegrating um, medication and the name for that one is Suprenza. There's some different formulations as well, but you want to work with a weight loss doctor to figure out what is best for you. Can you lose weight without a weight loss medication? Absolutely. But if you've been following me on social media, you've seen me mention that it's all about risk benefit. For patients who um, are morbidly obese or who have more risk factors or who have continuously failed at weight loss, we tend to think about weight loss medications and we think about them the way that we think about any medication. If it's going to be more of a benefit, then it's something that we may lean more towards. Um, if a patient is going to have a really bad outcome from not losing weight, for example, dying, then we would tend to lean more towards um, a weight loss medication. So one thing that I do want to stress is that phenamine is only one of several weight loss medications that are FDA approved. So it's important to work with a provider 
who can choose the right medicine for you if you are someone who is going to be on a medication. Um, I've been prescribing phenamine for a couple years now. Um, and, you know, knock on wood, I've never had any issues with prescribing it. I've never seen um, a patient have a poor outcome from it. But I also monitor patients very closely, and I'm also extremely experienced with using the medication. And I also make sure that I have the right medication for the right patient. So um, a couple things that I want to go through. A lot of times people will start phenamine and they will just stop eating or skipping meals. That's one of the worst things that you can do with this medication. The reason why is because you may have rapid weight loss, but typically individuals will lose muscle. And if you lose muscle, then you make it easier to regain weight. You make it harder to lose weight in the future. So although you're reducing your appetite, it's not intended for you to not eat at all. You still need good nutrients. You still need to have a um, healthy diet. Um, so you don't want to completely skip meals. You want to continue eating as you regularly would. Eating breakfast, um, not going more than four to five hours between meals, um, and eating things that are substantial. Um, of course, you want to keep in mind portion control and uh, not eating things that are unhealthy or things that are excessively sweet. But the idea with phenamine is not to completely skip meals. Um, which is something that I see people do often for rapid results, and that's not something that you want to do. Um, some other speaking points with phentermine um, that commonly come up, I will have patients say the medication has worn off or it seems like it's not working as effectively anymore. That is one of the side effects with the medication. As I mentioned earlier, it's a medicine that um, uh, releases norepinephrine in your body. This is a chemical that should not be released all the time. Um, it's one that we typically have released if there's something going on at that moment. We have to run from a bear. If we have to do something, um, you know, all of a sudden. So the body is smart enough to um, counteract that constant um, that that constant release of norepinephrine. So over time. The medication does wear off. There are some tricks and some tips for making it more effective that I use in my clinic. Um, and, um, you know, there's some things that you can work with the experienced provider to, to make it more effective. Um, but you will typically see the medication wear off and that's, a, that's, that's normal. Um, you know, is it a habit forming medication? Um, that typically comes up because it is a controlled medication and um, it is related to the amphetamine class of medications or drugs. Um, however, is it as, for, as habit forming as um, other control medications um, or uh, other medications in the class? Not typically, but that also goes back to choosing the right patient for the right medication. Um, you know, we don't use this in individuals who have a history of abuse, who have histories of alcoholism, who have, um, you know, dependency on uh, medications in the in the amphetamine class. So we try to make sure that um, we reduce that risk. Um, so overall, phentermine is is still the most commonly prescribed weight loss medication in the United States. The reason for that is because it's been around for so long, and it's also one of the cheapest uh, weight loss medications. It's generic. Some of the more um, the more recent uh, weight loss medications are a lot more expensive. So this is still one that's used very commonly. Um, and there's a lot of data over the last couple of years, well, several years, um, that suggests that this can be used very effectively. Um, in preparation for this uh, talk, I did get a lot of questions um, about the medication. And I'm just looking to see if there's anything that I have not answered. Um, you know, there are some questions about how long should you be on the medication. When phenamine was originally studied, it was studied for a three-month period, um, and that was back in the 1950s. So typically, um, providers will prescribe this medication for three months 
with the intention that you have three months to change your habits, three months to lose a certain amount of weight, and then stop the medication so that it's not um, you know, something that you have for a long period of time. What we find with phenamine, however, is that most people will need the medicine for more than three months. Um, however, it's still not intended to be something that you take forever. The idea is that you have something to use as a resource or a tool. It cannot do everything on its own. You have to change diet. You have to be more physically active. You have to fix any medical issues looming in the background. You have to optimize um, you know, medical history, things like that. Um, but it is a tool and a resource to help you get um, further than, you know, for some patients than they would be able to get on their own. But it's not intended to be something to take forever. And that's actually, you know, not my intention either. But I do um, use these medications for as long as I feel are appropriate um, for the right patient. Okay. So, um, I've actually pretty much gone through um, the, the biggest things with Fentramine. Um, it is a medication that I prescribe. It is a medication that I uh, very commonly prescribe. Um, it's one that I'm very experienced with. and It's, it's one that I've, I've used uh, commonly. So um, for patients who are currently on the medication and you haven't had a doctor talk to you about it in detail, hopefully this has been helpful for um, individuals who uh, have failed at weight loss and you're just wondering what other options do I have, I recommend that you give our office a call, 704-997-9661 for a consultation to discuss that. For individuals who um, are just curious about weight loss medication and um, have you know more um, more questions or you want to talk to a physician about it um, then you know this talk is is definitely for you um, if there are any questions in the chat room I will entertain those now um, but I've pretty much gone over um, you know the main things that with phenamine and and why we use it how it works um, and some of the history and background for this medication so if there are questions, you can write them in the comment area. I'll give you a couple minutes to do so, um, and I can answer questions that you have. If it's not related to phenamine, if it's related to a different weight loss medication, I can entertain those questions as well. If it's um, not related to weight loss medication at all, um, I can answer those questions also. Let me just check in our inbox on Facebook and make sure no questions slipped in there. All right. Okay, vegan diets. Um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, a hard question. Um, so my opinion on diets in general is that I always personalize diets for the individual. Um, I do not think that veganism is wrong. I think what is wrong is when we want everyone to be vegan or when we push a, agendas that are biased for um, you know everybody to have a certain diet. A vegan diet is, is a healthy diet. It does need to be supplemented with things like B12, which typically comes, well, not typically, um, only comes from, from meat. So that's the one thing that a vegan um, would have to do. But for a vegan diet, um, you know, these individuals are pretty much avoiding anything that's animal-based. So not just meat, but also anything that comes from an animal. So that would be eggs, that would be dairy, cream, um, things of that nature. So um, I think that a vegan diet can be healthy. I think that a, um, a low-carb, high 
uh, fat diet can be healthy. We see people lose a lot of weight on those diets as well. I think that a vegetarian diet can be healthy. So I think that what's most important when you think about diets is to work with someone who can personalize a diet for you specifically um, and who can ensure that you are getting proper nutrition balance. Um, and not just because of what the diets lack, but also because of your own health profile. You can have an absorption issue. You can be low on certain things. You want to make sure that you're supplementing those appropriately with a professional. Um, so I don't think that vegan diets are bad. I support um, diets that I feel are, are um, correct and adequate for uh, the individual. All right, are there any other questions? This is the first live um, stream on the business page. Um, so the plan is to have more of these to get topics from you guys. Um, Phenamine was a really big topic, so we went with this one. Um, it's also, you know, like I said in the beginning, it's something that people think about when they think about a weight loss doctor. Um, we do a whole lot more than just weight loss medications, but um, I felt like it was a good place to start. But the idea is to have these live streams routinely so that I can answer some questions that come up. Um, PCOS has been a question that has come up in um, some surveys with my, with my personal panel of patients, so I'll be talking about that. Um, you know, I'll pretty much be talking about the things that you guys are interested in. So, you know, I hope to do a lot more of these um, uh, and to bring you guys some topics that you really like. And it gives you a chance to, to see me in person. You guys see recorded videos, you see posts, you see things that my team puts together for social media. Um, however, you don't get to talk to me in live and, in, 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 you know, in person. So um, I think it's exciting to answer questions live and to um, for you guys to have an opportunity to engage with me and to interact with me. So, all right, I'm going to give you guys uh, one more minute, one or two minutes for any other questions. Um, let me just check the inbox again. All right, so we've got some questions in here. Okay, so. So the question is, are the best weight loss medications expensive? Um, no, not, not necessarily. Um, I'm going to sound like a broken record. The best weight loss medication is the best medication for the individual. We talked about fentermine and how its mechanism is it releases norepinephrine from the brain. The other medications have different mechanisms. They do all kinds of different things. So when I choose a weight loss medication for a patient, I do it based on their medical history. I do it based on their um, you know, medications, what other uh, disorders, conditions they have. I do it based on how much weight they have to lose. There's um, tons of things that I look at when I'm choosing a medication. So um, different medications are, are what's really best for the individual. And those can range from fentramine, which is the, by far the cheapest weight loss medication that we have, um, depending on, on where you're getting it from. I mean, it can range from $11 to $20. It's, it's very cheap. Um, but part of that's because it's been around for such a long time. There are medications that are $1,000 a month, um, you know, $1,400 a month for, for other medications, uh, weight loss medications. So that $1,000 medication may be really good for someone based on what comorbidities and issues they have. So the price um, does not necessarily mean that a medication is better um, or worse. What is most important is the mechanism in, in the patient. That's a very good question. Let's see if we've got any other ones in the inbox. Okay. All right. 
So this concludes the first live stream. Um, this is new for me. From what I understand, this will be available on the um, website, on, on the Facebook page uh, forever. So you guys can watch this again. The folks who have um, missed it are able to watch it back. Um, these are fun for me. I love doing um, I love talking to you guys. I love talking about what I do. Um, you may not know this, but I really love interviews. I love when people ask me questions. I love sitting and talking to people about what I do. So I'm hoping to bring you guys some more live stuff, some more content. And of course, um, send us topics, send us things on Facebook. If you're shy, you don't want to write it in front of of everyone, send it to our inbox for my personal patients. Um, you know, you guys can email me. Um, oh, wait a minute. We might have some more inbox stuff. Let me check this one more time. Um, okay. Um, sorry about that. It was pulling up a ton of messages, but those are not current or related to this. Um, so I do look forward to doing more of this and I hope that this has been informative. I will see you next time with another topic. Have a good night.